So I did a uh, blog post and a video a couple weeks ago talking about uh, what I refer to as Crockford objects. So uh, in my post, one thing I talked about was the many different ways you can actually create an object in JavaScript. So uh, obviously there's functions with uh, prototypes, uh, there's the class keyword, uh, and then there's also uh, essentially factory functions, which is what I'm referring to when I, when I talk about Crockford objects. So uh, in the post, I got a lot of comments, a lot of feedback from people about, uh, you know, why not just use the, the class keyword? And so I've done a subsequent post uh, on why you shouldn't use the class, or at least why I don't use the class keyword in JavaScript. You certainly can use the class keyword. It's, a, it's an approved uh, language feature in JavaScript. But I want to show a couple quick examples here uh, to kind of illustrate what I'm talking about. So one of the issues you can run into here, let me blow this up here, make it a little bit easier to read. This is a, uh, a class here that I have defining uh, this a person. And we can just use the new keyword here to instantiate a new, uh, uh, a new uh, object here. But one thing you'll notice here is that in the constructor here, uh, I'm sending in uh, you know, variables or parameters here in this constructor and then assigning them to these properties, the first name and the last name. And after I've constructed this uh, this object here, I've instantiated it, I went ahead and I assigned a, uh, a different name here. And this is what's referred to sometimes as like a leaky abstraction, right? One of the points of object-oriented programming, uh, like what you do with C-sharp and Objective-C uh, and uh, also with Java, is that when you create a uh, you create let's say a variable, an instance variable inside of a inside of a class, uh, one of the features there is you can encapsulate that, so you can hide details about uh, the object from the people that may be using it, let's say in an API. So uh, it's considered you know uh, it's considered bad uh, to. Uh, to have things like that exposed inside of your inside of your software uh, and cause bugs. Uh, there's some other issues with that as well. Uh, another example I wanted to show here real quick is uh, something, uh, uh, and this is one of the reasons why you see the, the class uh, keyword being used less and less, let's say, inside of React. So if you're doing React, one of the big trends they've made in, uh, in the last uh, couple years is to kind of move away from classes into uh, functions. So if we take a look at this example right here. Uh, this is a very basic example where I'm setting some state. Uh, I'm setting a count to zero. Uh, I have this uh, method in here that can increment that. And then inside of the render, uh, on the onClick event, I'm basically I'm making reference to this dot increment count, and that can increase the count every time that the button's clicked on. Uh, if we come here and take a look at this second example right here, uh, this is essentially this is doing the exact same thing. Uh, just here, instead of uh, basically using a, a class, I'm just using a function, and the function's returning. Instead of having a render uh, method inside of it, it's just returning you know, the output that you expect inside of JSX. And the main difference here is that it's using a hook. So if you look right here in the import statement, you can see that we're using use state. And by using this hook now, I can set up this uh, variable encounter uh, where every time that somebody clicks on the button, it increments the count plus one. And this is a lot simpler, a lot easier code to write than having to write a class that extends the, the React app component. So I'm going to put a link here in my notes to the, uh, to the new post uh, so you can read uh, uh, my reasoning, some of the reasons why uh, I prefer to use uh, uh, factory functions over classes in JavaScript. And I also have some links to some other interesting uh, articles in there about uh, why the class keyword is, uh, sh shouldn't be your go-to in uh, JavaScript. Now, granted, you know, a lot of this is my opinion, but it's based off of some of the problems you can run into when you're trying to use the class keyword in JavaScript. Uh, there's actually there's quite a bit of uh, code written out there that using, uses the class, and in, the, in a lot of cases, it works just fine. In other cases, uh, there's some other problems. 
And uh, one of the problems I've had just in general with uh, object-oriented programming, and I'm a big fan of object-oriented programming. I use it in my day job all the time. But one of the things I've noticed quite a bit is uh, you have these class hierarchies where you have, you know, inheritance of, or these deep inheritance chains of different objects. And one of the problems you run into when you do that is that it can cause um, uh, the fragile base class problem. So if you're not familiar with the fragile base class problem, essentially what that's talking about is that now if I need to go and make a change to, let's say, the parent object in a chain of objects, then I may have to go through and make that change throughout the, the, the hierarchy of objects or I may have to go and write a lot of repeatable code throughout all those different objects. So that's considered, uh, uh, I think inheritance now is, uh, just by in general, is, uh, is kind of frowned upon. Um, and it's better to make uh, your objects composable rather than, uh, uh, than inheriting. Um, and there's a lot of different techniques and stuff for, for doing that that I'm gonna cover in, in subsequent videos. But those are my reasons against using the uh, against using the class. So let's take a look at this example right here. So I have a class here called uh, a person, and uh, one of the things I illustrated before is that you know uh, one of the things I've done here is I've been able to expose the uh, first name uh, property on this uh, on this object, which is, you know, if you're doing traditional object oriented programming, that's considered to be bad because that's that's an elite key abstraction. So if I go ahead and run this example here, you can see here that I was able to access the first name property, change it, and now the original uh, object that I created has been altered from outside of uh, outside of the object. So if we come in here and take a look at this other example I have, uh, this is an example here that I wrote uh, using, you know, what I call the uh, Crockford object or factory object creation pattern. So if we take a look at this, you'll see here that uh, I've been able to take this, uh, the same, um, uh, uh, basically the same idea here for this uh, for this object. And what I've done here instead is if, instead of using a class, I have a function here. It's taking in uh, the parameters as an object. And then what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the first and last uh, properties off of that uh, off that object, and then I'm assigning them to local variables inside the function. So I have another uh, function here for printing the name, just like I did in the in the class, uh, which are using those uh, those two va variables that I created, and then I'm returning a brand new object, and I'm using object.freeze which uh, makes it so that the object can't be a uh, accessed or those properties can't be accessed uh, or changed uh, once the object's been created. So if I come over here now and I decide to run this example, I believe this is node, or this is factory. And you can see here that even though I tried to access and change the first name property to Bob, it still kept the original uh, the original property that I passed in when I created the object. So uh, I hope you understand this is one of the reasons why that I'm not using the, uh, the class keyword in, uh, in JavaScript. Uh, and if you like content like this, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you don't you know, like this content, you can give it a thumbs down, but please give it a thumbs up anyways. It helps the algorithm. And also, if you can, please subscribe to this channel. Uh, the more people I can get to subscribe to the channel, the easier YouTube uh, can handle the algorithm and, and promote the videos and stuff like that. I'm trying to get uh, more videos like this out here about JavaScript. So with that, thank you and have a good day.